somebody just brought to my attention a new package that allows you to create express like routing inside of an app write function. So basically this package allows you to handle URL routing just like you would inside of Express.js or very similar to that and really allows you to create an entire REST API if you need to with an app write function. So what we're gonna do here is go ahead and download that package. We're gonna take a look at it and we're gonna try to create a very minimalist REST API and see how everything works. So let's go ahead and take a look. So this right here is the package. It's called App Express, and we're just gonna follow the official website and go to the link to the readme file and follow the instructions on how to set things up. So quick disclaimer, this was made by an individual named Darshan. So just wanted to let you know that this is not an officially maintained package by AppRite. So just be advised if anything changes in the future, we'll let you know. So real quick, just to go through the readme file, we're gonna go through the instructions on how to install the package, how to do the basic setup here. So I'm actually just following this along directly here and then how to create the routing system, and then we'll go into setting up our middleware. So that's what we're gonna take care of here, but if you need more information, just know that you can scan through the readme file and see all the information about how to use this. So in preparation for this video, I've already set up an app write function. I have the repo cloned and set up locally. I removed a lot of the code, so all we have is a function that just responds with hello world. And the function right here, if I go to my app write account, we see the URL. So this is what we're gonna be making a REST API out of. So right now we're just saying hello world and that's it. So fresh start, make sure that's set up if you're gonna be following along. So let's go into the GitHub repo and we'll go to the top and we're just gonna follow these install instructions here. So we're gonna copy to clipboard, bring that in, install the package and we can close that out. So with this function, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and comment that out for now. We're gonna create some space and I'm gonna go ahead and import from the package itself. And this part right here, I'm gonna copy and paste in. So it's import app express from it's not a bug forward slash app express. Once we have that imported, I can set up the new instance and I'm just gonna call this app here and we're gonna do new app express and we can go ahead and create our first route handler. So what we're gonna do is create a function called get routes and this right here is just gonna go ahead and tell us all the routes in the application. So when we hit that home page to a route or that home URL, we're gonna make sure that we display all the routes. So we're gonna pass in request response from here, I can just go ahead and do response.json routes, and we're gonna pass in an array. So I want a few routes here. So the first one is gonna be the home page. So we know that we can enter this route. This is where we're gonna be currently at. Then we're gonna have a user forward slash username. So this is gonna be a dynamic route, which we're about to create. And then we want to have another route for user, and this is gonna take in a post request. So those are our routes. And in order to actually make this work, and we'll complete the rest here in a second, let's just go ahead and actually use this. So we create the function, and now we can call app.get. So we're passing in the request method. So we can do app.post when we're sending a post request. And here we specify the route to actually get this function, and then the function we want to call. So it's literally setting up the app express instance, creating the function and then creating the actual route itself and passing in the function handler. And I just realized this needs to be an object. So we're passing in a key value pair. So that's valid JSON right there. Otherwise it wouldn't work. So make sure we correct that. And then the last thing we need to do is go ahead and export an app write function. And what we're doing here is we're attaching our router to an app write function. So we have a root entry point to the actual router. So we still go through the function, but then the router takes care of everything else. So we pass in async, and then we're gonna use the context object and we can call app.attach. And here we can pass in the context object and that completes it for a basic route. So right now when we call the base URL, which is just forward slash, we actually return back everything in this response. So let's quickly just add a few more. We're gonna deploy this and then test this. So the next one we're gonna do is get user and this is gonna take the request response. And in this function, what I wanna do is show you how to actually set a dynamic URL and then pull the parameters from that URL path here. So we're gonna set this to username and this function is gonna simply take in the username itself and then return that username back. So before we actually set that key, I'm gonna go ahead and create the route. We're gonna go into the readme file. We'll see how to do this. And we're gonna set that to user colon user name. So that's how we set the dynamic route. That's how you do that in Express.js. And we're gonna call the function. That's gonna be get user. And if we go back into the documentation, so under the section called parameters, body, and wildcards, here we see we can set the dynamic path. So we have an ID and a transaction ID, and we can just call request.params. And this is how we pull that data out of there for body data. So whenever we send data to a specific route, 
we can also call request body and then actually send data to that. So we're gonna test both of these out. So let's go ahead and actually get that username. So we're gonna do const username. So whatever we called it here, that's what we need to reference this by. And this is gonna be request.params. And we can take this username and actually return it. And then we're gonna create a new function called create user. And we'll pass in request response. And in this function, all we're gonna do is simply return back the data that was sent to it. So we're just gonna go ahead and do response.json and we'll just say post data like that. And we can just get request dot body so whatever was sent in the request we're just going to send it back to a user so my point here is to simply replicate what a real request may look like we're not actually completing the entire process so with that being said let's just finish this up by adding the route so we'll do app dot post so we're now sending a post request this is going to user and then we just need to attach the actual function handler and that's going to be create user instead of get user so let's go ahead and deploy this and we're going to give this a test It's gonna take a minute to actually make sure it's deployed here. So we're gonna check that out. We'll go to the deployment section. And once it's ready, I'm gonna test the URLs and we'll actually go into Postman and try to send that post request. Okay, so it looks like the function's ready. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just copy this URL. So we'll copy the link address and let's go into Postman. So in Postman, I'm gonna start with a get request. So we set the method to get, we're gonna paste in the entire URL if I send this. Here we should see that first response that gives us all those routes, so that's good. And if we want to test a user, so we go to user forward slash then their username, so user forward slash Dennis Ivy, and that dynamic route works, so we just respond with the username. If we wanna test Bob John, whatever name we wanna test here, that works, so it's all working. Now let's go ahead and just grab the same URL and let's send a post request. So for a post request, we need to go to user and we need to send some data. So let's make sure we have body selected, raw and JSON, and let's just send in a name here. So we'll say name is Jane Doe, and we'll just throw in some more data. We'll say age is 25. Okay, so when we send it, uh, first of all, I don't know why it copied HTTP. It should be HTTPS. And make sure that there's no forward slash here. So I'm not sure if this is an issue right now, but it technically either should be appended or removed. So right now, if I add a forward slash, it shouldn't work. And if I go without it, it does work. So this is my post data. So it looks like all the routes are working. We have the base route, the get user route, and we're able to send post data. Now, if I try this with a forward slash, it looks like it's going to throw an error. So make sure that you have that without a forward slash. Okay, so in the next section, what we're gonna do is go ahead and actually build in our entire router. So we're gonna take what we have here, we're gonna remove some of these functions and put them into their own folder. If you're not familiar with the Express Router, it's just a routing system that allows us to manage our routes more efficiently. So we're able to split up our routes into different files and folders based on the topics that they're related to, and then use a router to group those back in together. So for example, right now, our application is pretty simple. So we have a few routes and a few route handlers. But once we start scaling this up, adding logic, and then maybe adding different topics in here, like routes for books or products, and not just users, we're gonna wanna separate those routes into those different folders, and that's what it helps us do. So to set up this router, what I'm gonna do is create a new folder here called routes, and inside of routes, we're gonna create a file called user.js, and user.js is gonna handle all the user-related routes. So we'll create that, and inside of that file, I can just go ahead and bring in this import of App Express. We'll bring this in here and then we need to set up our router. So router is gonna be equal to new app express dot router. And from here, we can just go ahead and actually grab these functions. So we're gonna grab create user and get user. I'm gonna copy those and remove them from here. And I'm also gonna delete these two right here. So we're just gonna remove that and we can bring this in here. And with these functions, I can now use the router to actually attach them. So we're gonna call router dot get so that's gonna be for the first one and what we're gonna do here is just go ahead and pass in username and we don't need to pass in user because that's gonna be prefixed once we actually configure the router inside of our main.js file so you'll see that in a second so here we can only or we only need to pass in just username so we can go ahead and pass in get user for the function and we can call router dot post so we have the same thing with the request methods there 
or the HTTP methods, and for post, because this is create and this is only hitting the endpoint of user, we can just pass in the forward slash because again, that part is prefixed. So we're gonna pass in create user, and then the last thing we need to do here in this folder is just to go ahead and export the router. So we're gonna export default router and save that and bring this into main.js. So in here, we can bring in the router. So we're gonna import user routes, and this is coming from routes and then user.js like that. So once that's imported, all we need to do is go ahead and call app.use and we're gonna pass in the URL here. So the prefixed URL, that's gonna be user, which is why we didn't need to add that in in the actual routes here. And we're gonna call user routes like that. And that should attach our router and everything should work just like the way it did before. So what I'm gonna do is quickly deploy the code and we'll just test it just to make sure. And then we're gonna move on to the last step. Okay, so the function's ready. Let's go ahead and test that. So again, this should just give us back the same response if everything worked. I should get back my username. And if I go to create, I should be able to pass in whatever value I want here, send it. And now we're doing the same thing just with the router. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to add in middleware. So oftentimes in Express, middleware can be used for something like authentication, where we need to check if something like a token exists in the headers before we let a user proceed to the route. So we're gonna go ahead and just add this in and we'll replicate something like auth middleware. So let's go ahead and add this. We'll go into source. And I'm gonna create a folder for middleware, and then we're gonna create an auth.js folder or file. So this is where all of our auth middleware will be. And what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and paste in a function. So we're calling this function auth middleware, we take in the request, and then we're just gonna go ahead and log out the token. So if a token exists, we're gonna say no token, or if it doesn't exist, we're gonna log out no token. If there is one, we're gonna say there is a token. And we're just calling request.headers and that's it. So this right here is gonna execute before one of our function handlers does, or all of them in this case, and that's all we wanna do. So that's middleware. So we're gonna go ahead and export this. So we're gonna export default auth middleware. And in order to actually use this, we're gonna go into main.js here, and we need to import this. So import auth middleware. And to use this, we're just gonna call app.middleware and we're gonna pass in auth middleware here. So what I'm gonna do quickly is just go ahead and deploy this function and then we're gonna check those logs and we'll pass in a token and we'll see what we log out based on that. And we're still gonna call one of these routes whenever we're making that request here. So we're actually gonna make a request to get routes here. But in this case, the middleware is gonna fire before that function actually gets called. Okay, so the function was deployed and let's go into executions here and we're just gonna execute the function manually from here. We're gonna send this to the root domain here and we're sending a get request and I can actually pass in headers right here. So we're gonna pass in a token and we're gonna say this is a token or actually really doesn't matter what I'm sending. And I'm gonna hit execute. And remember, if there is a token, we're gonna log out there is a token. If not, there is not. So this is still gonna call that function, but it's gonna log this out first. So let's go ahead and see if this went through. Let's just refresh everything. And let's go ahead and look at this. So we see there is a token. And if we try to send a request without a token, so right now we're not passing anything in, let's execute it. And it looks like it went through and it says no token. And we're just logging this out and that's it. So our middleware now works. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and found it useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the AppRite YouTube channel and I'll see you all in the next video.